I actually got two questions, one for uh, the old cast, well, um, especially David, of course. Um, these movies are no longer, I mean, this movie it no longer is a movie for kids. I got the sensation completely it's very dark and sometimes it's very, you know, some, um, one could see something borrowed from horror movies as well. And so I, you know, uh, my question is, um, how do you uh, choose to, uh, what was mm, actually driven you to, to go into other areas. And secondly, I would like to know, um, Daniel and, and, and Tom, this time on, on, on screen, you have your f first real fight. And how was that? I mean, uh, you two guys, you know each other for a long time, so was it difficult to get angry to each other? Or was not at all. <laughs> not a, a lot of tension over the years, needed yeah. to come out somewhere. Uh, it need, we needed, it's been building up. It was like we, me and Tom had just been stemming the flow for years, and now <laughs> suddenly we get to fight each other. No, it was great. I mean, for me, it was brilliant because, you know, as, as Tom, Tom has been kind of. Um, I, th I think it's fair to say, on the on the basis of this film, quite underused in in the other films, in that we, you know just things have happened and and you know there hasn't been so much of Malfoy, but luckily this time round, Malfoy gets a, a real showing and time Tom does brilliantly, and it was a it was a pleasure to uh, to act alongside him. I feel completely differently. It couldn't have been, <laughs> it couldn't have been worse. Uh, no, we did have a, it was it was great to have an opportunity to really sink our teeth into something and yeah. to and uh, sink our teeth into each other. I think it was. Uh, yeah. Finally, good to to, to 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 knock each other out a bit. Yeah. <laughs> and in terms of sorry, the yeah. Sorry, yeah. Tom. In terms of the darkening of the storytelling, I think that nat we're just following what Joe Rowling has given us. Really, Th this this series gets more mature, more complex, more intense, and um, so we're kind of following that tributary that she's given us. And I think I think I think y the younger members of the audience actually respond to that and they appreciate it. Interestingly enough, we had a little screening a week ago, and there was some very young members in the audience. My concern was that Half Blood Prince would leave some of them behind, and yet they came out of the viewing, their eyes shining. They really responded to the maturity and the intensity of some of the things that we're doing in these films. Um, they don't feel like they're being patronised, or they, it, you know, when you give them something that just is just beyond their fingertip reach, I think they respond. I think they like that. I think they like being frightened. I think they like the intensity of certain moments. So um, we're following what the map that Joe Rowling has given us, and I think we're staying true to that. And I think the younger audience are coming with us. I mean, it's funny you talk about it getting darker in America. This one gets a PG rating, whereas the last really? two films have gotten a PG thirteen. Wow. So. Um, that being said, I do think that there's elements of this which are, are, are darker. But what I like what, so what, David, what David just said, which is the, I think kids, I think parents are more worried about um, the films being dark than the kids themselves. And kids really embrace reaching. And, and I think where this film may be a little more mature is, is, is the depth of the character work and also the multi the, multi, um, the multiple strands working concurrently. It's not a single linear story um, driven by a single uh, purpose. And, um, and yet the kids that, that we've, s you know, we've shown it to, and young kids, really respond to that. I think, I think we all, I think at every age, we, like to, we don't like to be patronized to, and we like to be challenged. And I hope that we have done, and will continue to do that in the films to come. Gentleman in the second row and one just behind Simon, if you'd like to take the microphone and then the gentleman immediately behind you, and then we'll go down to row six here with with Daryl and row eight. Thank you. Uh, a couple of questions for Daniel. First of all, you quoted in the Esquire interview about saying you were bullied at school. Could you elaborate a bit on that and how you coped with it? Yes. You, uh, you know, this this is not this is it was it was not by any stretch of the imagination was it in any way traumatic or has affected me. You know, it was very. The extent of it was that there was just a few. No, I mean it wasn't. It wasn't even bullying. It was just the fact that I was not particularly liked, or I didn't get on with a lot of people. And sometimes it was to do with the Harry Potter thing. It was never anything. I would never say that um, I was bullied in it. You know, in in any real way. Not 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 to the extent that you know people actually really suffer from bullying. I I, I don't compare to them. And then also having done Equus in the forefront of nudity and that, has that given you a real taste for pushing the envelope and taking real risks in your acting? Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's, I think I, I wouldn't have done Equus if I hadn't already had that a taste for that, if I hadn't always wanted to, to, to do that. I just think that, you know, somebody asked me earlier, what kind of an actor do you want to be? And, you know, the only thing I could think of was somebody who just, you know, 
the, the, the greatest quality I think people can have as actors and, and some of the actors that I most admire have is their, their, their fearlessness and their just their willingness to their willingness to try something even if they think they might fail but to try it anyway is 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 that kind of fearlessness that I that I want that I aspire to certainly uh, this is a question for Daniel but also the rest of the panel can join in as well with their thoughts but uh, I was just wondering your feelings about the tragic death of Rob Knox, uh, which happened, you know, that we saw in the film, and I was just wondering how that affected you, how that, aff you know, your feelings on that, and thoughts on that. Yeah, I mean, obviously, what what is what is there to say? I mean, I'm I I, I won't pretend that I knew Rob incredibly well, I you know, that I, or that I was one of his best friends on the set, but you know, I knew him, I liked him, I it was, and what happened to him was ob obviously tragic, and and. Awful. I'm sure David, you might want to say something on that yeah. as well. I mean, for all, I think any, anybody who came into contact with Rob liked him. I mean, he was he was he was a good good guy. And I don't, I didn't know him that well, but but um, when anybody's life is cut short, and his most certainly was at a, in a really tragic way at a very young age, um, I think it casts you know casts a shadow, and I think for all of us, it just makes you realize how lucky we are and to live every moment as best you can. And, um, you know, I think that's, for, for most certainly for me, and I think for a lot of the people on the, on the film, that's, that's, that's what we f feel. But, um, yeah, I mean, do you want to say something? Yeah, Only I think. Because I oh, yeah, yeah. Um, no, obviously, I can, there was a lot of us that sort of, there was a lot of new people that joined the film, as with every film that we've kind of been on. So I think it definitely was kind of warmed into a lot, a lot of people who were working on the film. And I think... Obviously, it's going to be quite a traumatic experience for his family, which are very supportive for him. Um, obviously, tomorrow it's going to be quite difficult going to see the film, you know, to see him in it. Um, but I think, as a mark of respect, we wanted to not only just for his life, but other people who are, other families have also experienced the traumatic, um, you know, the crime that is within it. That we wanted to sort of wear as a like a mark of respect, kind of a white ribbon around our our wrist, just to show, just you know, obviously there's hundreds of different things and charities that are raising awareness. So I think we wanted to show our sort of involvement in it. I think the most uh, tragic thing is just the sheer waste. Because wh one thing you get with Potter is this tremendous energy and sort of passion for work. And you're surrounded by young people all day long who bring a great commitment to what they're doing. And Rob was no different. He came in and he wanted to do brilliant work. He put his heart and soul into it. And you just think, what a terrible waste. You know, all these young people are who have uh, been struck down by that knife crime. It's such a waste, basically. 